and the cult of hatred actually was brought through these acts from the Crusaders also much more when the former Mongols converted to Islam. They brought their belief in anti-intellectualism where the Ottoman Empire valued knowledge and some of the other Arab cultures is in, taught in the Quran that the, the mosque must have three things a place to pray, a hospital, and a library. Now since this hate is infected Islam and has changed so much, it was actually through Spain that the, through the Ottoman Empire, because there was areas that were conquered up in Spain by the Arabs, that some of our lost texts were reintroduced to, to the Western world, the works of Plato and Aristotle that we thought we had lost. Uh, there was a time when Islam embraced knowledge and didn't have this burn all the books, kill everyone. It actually became twisted. Some of the problems were caused by us, Cold War, uh, even uh, Hitler really infected the Arab world to, uh, with this anti-Judaism. And during the Cold War, the Soviets and Americans divided up the, the East, uh, the Middle East and the warring camps. So some of these... And you know, we, we can focus on the isms, the oilism, Cold Warism, but the bottom line is that these people have become and embraced hate so much that they're refusing any peace offerings. Now, Ayatollah has taken, and these other Arab, uh, Arab splinter groups uh, that has become mainstream, such as Al Qaeda. Uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Hamas, they embrace a God of death. Even though Islam means peace, they embrace a God of death which only accepts that you kill as many people as possible in the name of God. And the way to heaven is by the number of people you can kill. And we'll get a little bit more into that. Now, in my book, I touch on, and it's very important, I have a declassified report, even though we don't get the most of it, from the, the, the bombings in Africa and Tanzania in the 1990s. Now, this is the type of warfare they conduct and what we're seeing in Iraq. When they did these bombings, did they do it late at night? Did they do it on the weekend? No, they did it at the height of day. And to kill a handful of Americans, they killed about 12 Americans. They killed over 300 innocent Islamic citizens, African citizens, and injured over 3,000 more. They do not think anything of killing as many people as possible in their acts. We see this in Iraq where a suicide bomber will go into a hospital, will go into a school, will go into a shopping mall. And he doesn't care, he's not killing any Americans. They're, they're creating chaos. They're trying to kill as many people as possible to force their way of life upon the world through chaos, death, and destruction. Now again, you know, we're focusing on Iran and Iraq, who we have to remember too, had been bitter enemies for many, many years. Mm -hmm. The United States considered Saddam Hussein an ally at one point in fighting Iran. Mm -hmm. So, why did we go into Iraq first? Well, we went into Iraq, and we'll be covering it more in depth, but definitely Saddam Hussein was and working on creating World War III the same way Iran is diligently working on it now. People tend to forget we see how much chaos and how trying to unite Iraq is. You think of Saddam Hussein in a period of just a few decades took Iraq and built the fourth largest military in the world with some of the most modern equipment and he also had the largest chemical and biological warfare arsenal in the Mideast his military was trained and indoctrinated and sold in the Cold War Soviet tactics of chemical and biological warfare. He, he created schools and institutions that was based on learning how to employ and use biological and chemical warfares. There were doctors that are known like Dr. Anthrax, Dr. Germ, K. 
Chemical Ali and others. It would only have taken Saddam Hussein a very short period of time to reconstitute his arsenal. You know, we also, it was very important in 1997, late 1997, that we had found Saddam Hussein's chemical arsenal of VX nerve agent, the most demical, deadly chemical weapon on the face of the earth. And he had had enough persecutory chemicals and material to make enough VX to kill every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. He had even uploaded it into VX, this VX, this deadly VX, into Scud missile warheads. Now this is all in my book. These are from UN records. If we had gone into Iraq in 1997, we would have found it then. He was able to get it out. And we're kind of running out of time, but I wanted to talk about uh, some of these other reports that came out from the Center of Strategic International Studies. Uh, Anthony Kordsman, you can download his report on my website, www.nucleariranwatchinfo. There's an 80-page report. There's also a military report that has pictures and items of Iraqi equipment captured in Iraq. Uh, we didn't have time to go into some of the things like 200 suicide belts that were uh, found being trying to smuggle into Iraq from Syria and reports from Admiral Gregory Smith. We'll touch on some of these uh, at the beginning of the news next week. We'll talk about the Iranian equipment that's being captured in Iraq and these reports that are just being ignored by Washington officials just for partisan politics. But we have to remember, Iran has killed several hundred Americans in Iraq, and we basically have done nothing. It's considered a sensitive issue. If these Americans were being killed on U.S. soil, I guarantee something would be done. But Iran is hell-bent on having World War III developing a nuclear arsenal. And we'll be getting into more of this deadly threat Iran, these, these, these religious Islamic fascists are fanatics. Bush and other Washington officials think that we can reason with them. They continue to kill Americans. They have been since the inception of Ayatollah Khomeini. We need to understand and recognize these threats. Thank you for your questions and having me on chat TV. Uh, you got to get in a little bit more than you usually do. Well, thank you again, Steve, and of course, this is Ryan Weaver reminding you, it's your community. I'm Ryan Weaver with Chat TV News. I'm Desiree Dunn, and this is Chat your TV's community. I'm Ken Holloway with Chat TV News, number one in news, it's your community. Chat TV's where I want to be, they got local news for you and me, they talk about our neighborhood, I don't want to be misunderstood.